Welcome to What's Up, Bolts. I'm Fernando Ramirez. That compa's on the hat, on the beat hat wearing, sunglass don and whistle blowing. Son of a gun, must be Dan and Dago. Shout Dan, out. How are you doing? I'm excellent. Had a good day at school, practice, game day on Thursday this week, so a little short week, but that's all right. We're rolling. How are you doing? I am good. Uh, just got back from uh, Costa Mesa. Uh, Chargers obviously get down to their 53-man roster. Now, before we begin this, I just have to let you folks know that I don't have breaking news or anything. But guys, when we talk about the 53-man, the initial 53-man roster, remember that there can be changes that come. There can be um, cuts and everything else. Cuts and stuff because of uh, because obviously other players got waived. The waiver wire. The Chargers could pick up one or two extra players. So remember, don't come at us for this. We're just doing this. We do it for you so that you guys get a good. Uh, Idea. For We're gonna break down, uh, yeah, exactly. We're gonna break down the uh, the positions and everybody that the that these guys signed. We have all that, so make sure that you guys are listening. And remember, this is subject to change; it can change at any time. So don't come at us if they make a cut or whatever. But uh, this is just what we see. But Dan, right away, uh, some surprises. Um. I guess we'll go with the elephant in the room. We already know elephant, not not <laughs> elephant, but we already know that this team has a track record of undrafted free agents making an impact. You have Antonio Gates. Yep. You have Malcolm Floyd. You have Austin Eckler. Well, the Chargers decided that two undrafted free agents were going to join their team, and that's uh, running back Elijah Dodson, Obviously, Elijah made some noise during the Rams game, preseason game. He's uh, shown some some some. Uh, he's shown some stuff in the in other preseason games, but obviously, the one that put him on the map was that Rams game where he had uh, two big runs. Obviously, when he hit the edge of both of those runs, he accelerated and was able to take off. And then, obviously, That's when you look game. at um, when you look on the other side, AJ Finley, safety out of Ole Miss. He ends up making the team, and uh, we asked Derek. We asked Derek Ansley. We haven't spoken to Brandon Saley or Kellen Moore, uh, but we did talk to Tom Telesco uh, as well. And Tom just said, basically, when it came to Elijah Dotson, he did everything we wanted him to. He ran the football hard. He uh, he was able to run the football well as uh, or good as well. But then also, he his patch catching ability. I know he had. A drop in the two-minute offense against the Saints, and and uh, some little mistakes here and there. But they they liked what they saw in practice. They saw what they they liked what they saw in the game. So obviously uh, they're excited about him. And then um, AJ Finley, I we asked Tom Telesco, and Tom said, "Look, we had some guys. We had Mark Webb. We had uh, other guys that were in there vying for a spot. But we decided you you guys will hear Dan and Dago's voice pretty soon. But I just no. want to give you guys the background." Um, we, we liked what uh, AJ did for us. They think he can be a special teams player as well as uh, as well as contribute uh, on defense. But we all know that both guys – oh, and uh, Derek Ansley said that they looked at – they went all the way back to his high school days to check his uh, – to check his um, – to his film that they loved it. They went to his college days that everything checked out. He's everything that they wanted uh, – that they, they like everything about him. They think he's a really good player, and they feel like he could really help this defense out. Um, but, Dan, we we know it's going to be tough for both of those guys to see the field. I mean, I don't even know if they'll dress on game day. The only thing that kind of has both of them in a sense that they could see action is if something happened in front of them. But the reason why I say that is because both of them can play special teams. Uh, I think uh, – I think if Darius Davis was unable to go, it would be um, it would be Elijah Dodson that would return kicks. And uh, on the other side, A.J. Finley, I'm sure, will have a spot on on special teams. But one, how imp- how impressed were you that both of these that two undrafted guys made it, especially with the lo- like the talent that the Chargers have? And then two, uh, it will be difficult, don't you think, for them to be able to play, especially with some of the guys in front of them? Uh, I think number one to start with, it's it's nothing to you know overlook because everybody knows when you don't go drafted, it's almost like 
I, I would assume it's mostly known. Everyone else is mostly known as camp legs. Just guys they have come try out, and you know, at the end they'll thank them for their service. Thank you for being a scout team or whatever, and they'll move on. So for two guys to make it, honestly, shout out to these guys because that is no small feat to accomplish. Not only is it very extremely difficult to get invited to a camp, but it's even more difficult to actually make the team. And I think just in the sense of uh, how hard it is, I think Dotson might get some time because, again, I think the biggest problem on offensively has been that they have found no second running back. And I think right now they have Eckler. We're going to see what Spiller has. And who's the third one that they have then? No, it was only – oh, uh, Isaiah Sp- – uh, Joshua Kelly. Oh, Joshua Kelly. Yeah, that's right. So – I think honestly, if unless uh, we already saw last year, Joshua Kelly was producing and everything else, but then he got hurt. You know, it's again that I hate to say it, but you know, you almost feel like it's coming. Like someone's going to get hurt either in that room or somewhere else. But you know, I I would not I would not uh, be surprised if he does suit up because, like I said, I think what they're missing in the backfield is that type of burner who has that type of getaway speed. And because of the fact that no one has really stood out as the number two guy, I think there's no reason why they shouldn't play around and see who's got the juice that week running back by committee for the number two spot or whatever. Because again, last year we saw Joshua McKinley, he produced, but uh, then he went down and last year we didn't see, I don't correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we saw anything of Isaiah Spiller. No, we saw some, but it wasn't that much, especially because Sonny Michelle was on the team at first. Yeah. And- yeah so So that's going to be interesting to see. Like, I think out of the two, he would probably be one of the first ones to come up. Yeah. Uh, No surprise there with the quarter. Let's just go position by position, I guess. Quarterback, no, uh, no, um, no surprise there. Justin Herbert, Easton Stick, they keep two. Uh, Obviously, I didn't think Max uh, uh, Duggan was going to, Duggan was going to make, was going to make the team. Uh, just because uh, I just thought they'd keep two no matter what. Easton, obviously, they feel like is the backup. Uh, Tom did say that he hopes that they can put uh, that they can ma- put Max on the uh, practice squad. Uh, and he was asked, is there anybody else, a veteran quarterback or anything that you'd like to go get? And he said, no, that Max is going to be their practice squad guy if he clears waivers. So uh, that'll be interesting. Dan, you already kind of touched on the running backs. Um you broke all four of them down. I'm real quick, like Dan. I'm just gonna reiterate what Dan said. Joshua Kelly says he's very excited about this offense. Can he stay healthy? That's the big question on him. Isaiah Spiller, what can you bring to this team? Um, I know it's only preseason, but they ran the ball, the football a lot during preseason. So uh, I don't think that's gonna be anywhere near what this offense is gonna look like. But still, can you be consistent? That's gonna be the big question on him. Uh, fullback Xander Horvath. I think he's a guy that uh, can contribute on both offense and special special teams. I think he's a really good player. Yep. Um, but uh, at fullback, I I'd like to see the Chargers go to him a little bit more. I think he has a little bit of wheels on him. I think last yeah. year they used him the first two games yeah. for those two, two touchdowns, touchdowns, and then they didn't two use him at all. Yeah. So yeah, get creative with him. Trying. I know that Kellen Moore really doesn't use a fullback all that much, but. I think it'd be good to use him um, in a in a role in some in some capacity. Uh, this one surprised me a little bit, Dan. Receivers only five: Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Josh Palmer, Quentin Johnston, and Darius Davis. I'm going to tell you why I was a little surprised. I thought Kellen uh, Keelan Doss would make this team. Why? Because I thought they would want a presence on special teams of an off of a receiver, maybe. And I thought Keelan could be a guy that could play special teams that he could go in there and, and, and put some work in. I thought that would be a good, uh, I thought that would be a good way to, um, maybe stay on the team, but I guess, uh, he should be a, a practice squad player. He may be brought up, but I just thought they would go with six, but J, uh, Jalen guidance on the PUP, Tom Telesco was asked about it. He said, um, he yeah, said he that, that. Uh, that they're not going to talk about that until four weeks. They'll analyze it back again in four weeks. So if you're on the PUP, uh, Dan, you cannot play for the first four weeks of the season. So they yeah, said they'll see, was, yeah, yeah, they'll see where Jalen Guyton's at. In yeah, uh, that's why I in, thought it was really weird. Like you said, that they didn't bring another guy in. Like, yeah, I don't go know ahead. What more they, they needed. I said I, I I thought it was weird. Like you said, that they didn't bring in another guy because you're already missing four weeks. Four weeks essentially. So like, and yeah. then on top of that, you have to try and get him up to game speed and make sure he's ready to go. And hopefully he's not hesitating because of his injury and stuff like that. He doesn't want to get re-injured. So I think, I, and like we've sort of mentioned this before, 
I really don't understand what more they need to see in Jalen Guyton, but apparently there's something. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think, that, I think that he's going to be that speed guy that can do what he did before, but oh, who knows how yeah. he's going to be because it, it kind of is taking a – like, I'm not I'm not trying to – because I know Tom even said this, but I'm not trying to put a timetable on it, but it's almost almost been a year since he tore yeah, that ACL. I think, I think he got early. It was early, early, like week one or two week or three, whatever. Week three, yeah. Oh, week three, yeah. Yeah, so it, it – it, I'm and again, I'm not trying to rush him or anything, but um, you would think – and I, I think Adrian Peterson is just kind of – Set our yeah. standards. Some other players Anomaly. have kind of set our standards. Like, hey, after nine months, you should be ready to go. But uh, they're taking their time with him, and I think that's smart. To be honest, I think it's yeah. smart for Jalen to for them to take their time on Jalen, especially if they don't really need him right now. So, uh, but um, I think they're in a good spot for the receivers. I just would have thought they would have kept one more just in case. It, it, that's the biggest thing. Is like you're going to be down to five, and let's hope number one, no one goes down, and let's you know. And the other hopeful thing that I'm thinking of is I hope they use Darius Davis just in different types of um, in different types of ways. Like, don't just have him every time he comes in, just run a sweep or things like that or a screen or whatever else. Like, you know, I would almost look to him like the DeAndre Carter type of uh, model. Like, yeah. who would have thought he would have came in and been such a productive receiver? Like. I think and that's everybody's going to be so up. focused on everybody else. Exactly. And that's the other thing. They're going to be so focused on everybody else. You put him in the slot, maybe he gets uh, uh, a linebacker match, matched up on him. That's a mismatch that you're going to win every time. So I just hope they're creative and don't just – like like we've said when he was drafted, right? I don't understand the whole, oh, you're just a returner in special teams. That's it. I'm not going to put you anywhere else. Like that to me is kind of weird, especially like when you know – You can even do fakes with him ability. and pull the defense that way. Yeah, exactly. Or run fake bubbles or whatever. You get him thinking he's going to get a screen, like whatever it is. But I just hope they use them in their creative because, number one, like I think that one of the most important things is you need to have guys rotating in for Keenan and Mike because maybe, you know, I don't want to say load management because obviously it's not the same, but I think maybe part of the reason why sometimes they get hurt is they're probably in there every offensive snap and everything else, and it's like yeah. you have to kind of use them in different ways. Not protect them, obviously, because you need them to play free. But maybe, you know, um, make sure they don't go 30 snaps a game if that's what it is, and that's why they're getting beat up too much or whatever it is. So I just think they need to be creative and they need to be smarter than they were last year. I completely agree with you. Uh, They keep four tight ends. Gerald Everett, Dan, I think he's a good pass. 100%. He deserved to come back, yeah. Yeah, I think. And then for what they're paying him, I think uh, he's actually a little underpaid. But, um, I mean, he had 500 receiving yards last year, but – he, he had a big impact hey, in that playoff up. game. Yeah, he, I was about to say, he was the only receiver putting yeah. in work. You remember he was doing this like five or six times because he was get, he was uh, the only yeah. one catching balls out there. Yeah, so I I, I think that he's going to be a good piece, especially because I think he's just another receiver out there. I mean, his blocking is, is, is eh, but uh, I think he's another receiver. Donald Parham, they kept. Um, <laughs> Stone Smart is another guy that they I like that uh, guy. I they, like that they, guy. They uh, they wanted. To, I'm sure they wanted to keep him. Why? Because I think Stone Smart could be a, a a good addition to this team. I think he can help pass catching wise. I, I think he's done. He's shown a little bit more and more these last few weeks. I think if they put him in there, he could be another offensive weapon. And you need yeah. that because you. I don't think you can count on Donald Parham to be healthy nope. all seven at all. Nope. So uh, I'm sure well, they're, they're like, going to want that. Like, Last year, I think Stone Smart played, and he was impactful. Like, yeah, he didn't go 100 yards or this or that, but, you know, he was coming up with 50, 60 yards uh, in a game, and that's that's all you need out of a guy like that, like not really known, you know, is on the team, and that's the type of productivity you need, you know. Donald Parham, I think it's his third year on the team, right, Brown? I think it might be his fourth. I think that's another one like Jalen Guyton where I kind of don't understand it. Just because you've kind of seen everything you've needed to see in four years, in my mind, like unless freaking. Uh... <laughs> oh, and by the way, Stone Smart is a former a uh, former receiver. No, a former quarterback turned receiver turned tight end. So he's well, there seen... you go, yeah. there you go. So he sees the field a little bit differently. But like Donald Parham, going back to it, unless Kellen Moore is going to freaking revive him and be, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't know what else they expect to get out of him. Like it's just I think... not, sometimes. I think my biggest problem is sometimes he goes, uh, he goes dark. You can't find him anywhere. You know, he goes, uh, like, uh, you know, you just can't find him. He gets small sometimes in big games. And I think that's a problem. Obviously he's been injured a few times and stuff like that. So, 
That one was uh, Trey McKinney as well was, stayed on the that team. one I couldn't believe either. Like, if you want him as a blocking tight end, I've seen him block. Like, it's nothing to write home about. Then on top of that, he drops passes that are hitting him in the hands. I don't give a rat's ass what your skill set is. If it hits you in the hands, there's no way you're dropping it, especially if the son of Odin is slinging it. So and that one, was, I, I was un, I could, I didn't, I didn't understand that one for sure. It was interesting too because Brian Staley said this is going to be a huge camp for Trey McKitty, and I, oh it, yeah, I feel like we saw a whole a bunch from him. But I guess yeah. the Chargers want to keep him. They'll see what he contributes. But I know he's a former third round draft pick. But you got to cut your losses. Dude. Tillery was there too long. Some of these guys are there too long, dude. I, I think I saw somebody on, uh, on Twitter put. He's our new Tillery, and I just started oh, laughing. I was no, like, oh, I, uh, I have someone else right there. <laughs> uh, okay, they decided to keep nine hogs, uh, Dan. Not they out. decided to go Rashawn Slater as your starting left tackle, left tackle. Zion Johnson as your left guard, yep. Yep. Corey Lindsley mm-hmm. as your center, right guard Jamari Sawyer, mm-hmm. and your right tackle Trey Pipkins. Backing them up is Jordan mm-hmm. McFadden. Dan, by the way, I think you only allowed one pressure uh, this whole uh, good preseason. So uh, good. he might be a good. The, he might good be because from the few games I saw him, I was a little bit nervous. I'll start uh, with what Will Clap, uh, Foster Serrell, and Brandon right. Hymas. Um, Foster Serrell, you know, is a low key sneaky guy because the game he stepped in against San Francisco last year i thought he was really solid so and that's i'm glad they brought him back and hopefully he can develop a little more and then we'll uh, see what we got. i honestly thought that this was Zach Bailey versus Brendan Hymas and to be completely honest i know Tom Telesco told us during the during uh the the breakdown of the roster he's like look he's like those two guys are play different positions so they have nothing to do with each other but ultimately it looked like eight guys were slam dunks to make this team it was just that one and it felt like brendan hymas hasn't really done anything he hasn't impacted i kind of feel like the chargers are kind of keeping him as a um as a trey pipkins kind of guy like oh hey we develop him and then hopefully he turns out to be something good and then we pay him they've been playing him at center and i know that Corey lindsley um is getting up there in age i'm not saying that they're gonna get rid of him or anything but um but possibly they could uh they could well. Who knows? Who knows what happens with uh, yeah. with them? But um, because he's a name that's been floating around a lot. I remember either last year or the year before. I can't remember who went down that. That's the name I saw all over Chargers Twitter. Brendan Jaime. So I mean, we'll see what they got. Yeah. So we'll see what he can do this year. But I, I just Zach Bailey felt like he was a guy that had been plugged around different places and and he had actually done some good work for them, but. The coaching staff didn't feel like that, and like I said, he's a former draft pick, so obviously that might be kind of hard to let go. But uh, don't get me started on that. Tom subject. said, "Tom said that he's done some good work for them, and that they feel like he's progressing they the way." All they always do. They so, all always do. Uh, all right, let's go now to the defense. Uh, defensive lineman Dan Morgan Fox, Shout Austin out. Johnson, who returned from Shout PUP, out. Sebastian Joseph Day, Nick Williams. Scott Matlock and Christopher Hinton have all uh, ha- are going to make up your defensive line. They're going to be the guys that are going to try and stop the running backs from uh, going off on the charge the way they kind of have. So I think it starts up front. I actually, Sebastian Joseph Day told us today, he's like, you know what? I think we have the most depth at defensive line since my 2020 season when I was with my previous employer. Well, that's when the Rams. Uh, that's when he was with the Rams. So, uh, so he. Well, and he then they have that, Tito. They have Tito on the PUP, also, right? Exactly. So I have uh, Tito Vanya waiting. So it, I think it'd be between Nick Williams and uh, Christopher Hinton on uh, who would give up that extra roster spot for Tito. Tito will be out for the first four weeks of the season. Then, obviously, uh, we'll see what happens with uh, with them. That's what uh, Tom Telesco told us. But um, but definitely, I thought that uh, Gerard Clark. I thought, well, this is and this is what uh, even Sebastian said. Uh, Gerard Clark. He thought C.J. Okoye and um, who was the other name that and David Moa. He said when I when I I always try and be on the first bus. And when I I told guys, hey, like he's like I told Chris Hinton. I told Scott Madlock, hey, you guys need to join me on that first bus. He's like, then everybody else started doing it. David Moa, 
uh, CJ, uh, all those guys. And yeah, I remember taking role and those guys were always there. So, uh, first, so you could tell it, it's gotten the, the work ethic has gotten, um, contagious. And, uh, so the yeah. chargers, I mean, this is probably their best defensive line group in a long time, but you should be excited for that, huh, Dan? Well, I am not excited for anything until week one hits. I don't care about preseasons and scrimmages. Yeah, they don't mean well. anything to me. So, Week one is going to be the real test, especially because you know Mike McDaniel. You know he's a pretty good offensive mind, right? I don't think he. I don't think he's. Uh, I think he's just had you know short end of the stick because who his quarterback is. Not everybody can have the son of Odin, but it's going to be interesting. That game I think is going to be a good test for those guys because you know he's going to want to run the football and everything else. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree, and obviously we all know that. Um... We all know that uh, the defensive line has kind of been one of those, uh, one we, of those weaker points. Weaker yeah, points. We've exactly. seen defensive linemen in the past year playing linebacker depth in the run game. How that happens, you know, that is a no no for a defensive lineman. Like, you got to hold your gaps. At worst, for a defensive lineman, you've got to get into a stalemate and hold them up at the line of scrimmage. That's the at worst you got to do. You get driven back two to three yards let alone linebacker depth, and that's a W for the offensive line every single time because the running backs going to find the hole. So I think the biggest that's been the, one of the biggest weaknesses, and we talked about this a little bit last time because you could tell by the different body types that we're bringing in, like the Okoya guy, and I think the other guy who got cut was also like 6'7", right? And it's uh, like the, Gerard Clark? Yeah, was he 6'7", also or no? No, I think he was uh, short. Who was the other guy that was like massive? Did he make it? Was it Hinton? I think Hinton is 6'4". Well, I thought there was another massive Oh, guy. so is Gerard Clark. He's 6'4 as well. Okay. Well, never mind. But you could tell they were trying to bring in bigger bodies to, you know, eat up blocks and stop the run. So even though he didn't make the team, obviously, but I mean, it's just, I think it was his first year playing for football or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Okoye? Yeah. So I'm sure yeah. they're hoping. I'm yeah, sure he had never played football before. I'm sure they're hoping. So he's going to be on the practice. So he officially can be yeah. put on the practice squad for the next two years, and nobody can touch him except for the Chargers. Oh, so he's already on the practice squad. Well, no. Well, once he, he has clear waivers, waivers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So once that's what I'm waivers. saying. Like, you could tell that guy they're trying to bring in his. Oh, actually, no, no, no. I think the Chargers can officially bring him back. I think that's what Tom Telesco said today, that they're going to bring him back, that he's going to be on their practice squad. Oh, and he doesn't he count as a roster, as a practice squad uh, player. Well, there you go, because they understand that they need guys in there who are going to be physical and need up blocks. So yeah. I think you can tell by the different body types they've been bringing in that they're really emphasizing trying to stop the run this year. Uh, we're going to go next with pass rushers. Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, Tui, uh, Tuli, Tui Pulotu, and uh, Chris Rumpf. Dan, I think Tuli has – I mean, everybody's talked very highly of him. We've seen his play so far in the first two preseason games. But I think Chris Rumpf is a guy that uh, he could be – I think he might have improved. Uh, obviously, training camp so. and, the real, and the real games are something else. But everybody keeps on saying that he's filled out his body the way they had hoped, that they feel like he's kind of taking that next level. Um, but it's not just about rushing the passer when we know that. It's also about what can you do, um, what can you do to stop the run and do all that stuff. So uh, he's going to need to impact uh, the offense or the defense, the impact the uh, the opposing offense by uh, being able to stop the run and do everything that basically Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack do. But it seems like the team is very high on their pass rushers uh, going into this season. You know. Call me a pessimist, but I think I think that is way too thin of amounts to have just because uh, you already saw what happened last year, and there was virtually no pass rush after Joey Bosa went down because Khalil Mack was getting double, triple teamed, and everything else, getting chipped off the edge and stuff like that. So me personally, I might be a nervous Nelly, but I think that's too thin. Uh, I think what, the him? Thing is, He's too thin? No, no, no. It's the, the group. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have yeah. only four or whatever. I think it's very thin, and I understand numbers and all that, but, you know, I think it's too thin for my comfort, especially when you saw, you know, I guess to point him out, Chris Rumpf last year was a perfect, you know, audition to make sure he was a solidified number two, and I don't think he did enough, but um, it is what it is. And let's hope he really filled out his body because the problem is your number one job as an edge or whenever you're outside is to keep contained. And these 
tackles are very physical and either trying to reach you, log you to make sure you can, they can get outside or make sure they wash you, which they just drive you to the sideline and make that hole even bigger. And, you know, if you don't have proper technique and proper leverage, they will run you over. And that's, I think, the biggest problem sometimes he's faced. And, you know, and that let's just hope he really is filled out because in the past, bro, too, sometimes, you know, he just wouldn't get pressure. Like the times he gets sacks were like on a blitz and, you know, someone's chasing him right into his arms or things of that nature. And, you know, I think the biggest problem right now facing – Brandon Staley and Derek Ansley, I think is his name, right? The DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Is you need to get Bosa and Mac off for a, for you know a quick squirt of water, and the, you need to have competent people behind them. You know this Thule kid. I think it's personally, I think it's a lot to ask of a twenty year old or whatever he is to essentially be a backup in the National Football League and take meaningful reps and not get you know dominated or discouraged or whatever. But uh, and the other thing is, you've got to be able to trust Chris Rumpf. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, because I think they're top heavy at that position group, obviously. But I mean, only time will tell to see if either Thule is that guy or if uh, Chris Rumpf actually improved. All right. Moving on to the linebackers, Kenneth Murray, Eric Perfect. Kendricks, Dayon Henley, uh, Amen Agbang Minga and uh, Nick Neiman. Um, I don't think there's much we need to get into it. We obviously know uh, Dayon Henley, Amen, and Nick are going to be mostly special teams players. Dayon well, has I a don't chance. Know, I don't in. know about I don't know about that too. Dayon has a chance to come in and uh, play some defense, but I really do think that Kenneth Murray and Eric Kendricks are going to be the guys that. here. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're going to trot them out there just like they have in the past. But again, and this is. I don't want people to misconstrue and think I'm thinking he's a scumbag and this and that. No, yeah, I'm There's sure one he's a lovely he's person. Like I'm sure he's a lovely person, but again, he's a great kid. Uh, and right, more power to him. Shout yeah. out to him, right? Nobody wants but, to see him succeed more than you. Well, that's big facts. That's no, I know. Facts. I'm saying I'm being like, honest. Big fact. Okay, I thought you were being sarcastic. No, that's that's straight up facts, right? There's nothing would make me happier than to eat my words when I speak about people on this program, on this team, right? But I, number one, I said this early. I don't understand why he didn't play preseason. I have PTSD from Jerry Tillery not playing preseason, and that makes me nervous. But um, but I just don't think he's produced enough tape, number one, to warrant no preseason. And number two, I don't think he's produced enough tape, really, to be the number one starter. I think at times he gets eaten up by guards, and at other times in coverage, you know, he gets lost. And um, obviously, for the most part, he's been a sure tackler. Sometimes he misses. Then they did that stint where they try and move him to the edge. And I think that's been, you know. Yeah, it's a new a year. Night. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if it. Well, you know, I mean, everybody keeps on speaking very highly of him. Uh, Eric who, Hendricks. Who? That, who? Uh, he Eric Hendricks, him. his teammate? What yeah. is he supposed to say? And I don't mean that as a negative. Like, but let's be real. Week one, we're gonna find out. Period. Week one, we're yeah. gonna find out. Period. So, yeah. like all I right, said, we'll see. Uh, I just cornerback. Would have had him get more reps. To you know, cornerback. No surprise here. Uh, Asante Samuel Jr., J.C. Jackson, Michael out. Davis, Jazier Taylor, and Dean Leonard. Uh, as of right now, J.C. Jackson has basically been there the whole camp. He only missed like two days Shout out. of practice. Uh, he had a, almost an ear interception with the. Uh, with the uh, New Orleans Saints and the joint scrimmage. Um, and so it looks like all systems go for week one. Michael Davis and J.C. Jackson on the outside, Asante in the inside. They may be rotating Asante, J.C., and Jazier a little bit. But it looks like that's going to be the starting three for those guys. So I think all eyes are going to be on J.C. Jackson. I think 100%. if he, can, he said, I want to go back to Mr. INT. I want to show these guys I want to be that player again. If he can be that player for the Chargers again, or if he can be that player for the Chargers, then I really do think that they're going to take a um, – I think they're going to take that next uh, level, to be honest. 100%, because that was a key piece that we're missing last year. You know, 100% at all positions, but obviously, like here, you need that deep rotation also because, number one, to give them different looks, different skill sets and stuff like that. So, you know, it's going to be interesting. We all knew it was probably going to be these guys because they've gotten the most reps and we've seen them year to year. So it's going to be interesting the way it plays out this year. So, you know. Yeah. 
Not much to say um, on that one. Safety, obviously, like we already spoke about AJ Finley, but your starters will be Derwin James, Alohi Gilman. JT Woods is the guy, Dan, that I think is that's where you put the highlight here. Him and some JT others, yeah. Woods is going to need to take that next step because it seems like when Derwin's down in the box or at linebacker, wherever he may play star or wherever he plays, it's going to be Alohi Gilman and JT Woods back there. So he's going to need to take that uh, next step. AJ Finley and then Raheem Lane. Raheem Lane is a guy undrafted free agent that they signed last year. But oh, I think wow. we need to circle JT Woods on here because JT, they're going to depend on him a lot. Yeah. They're going to need him to take that next step. And if he does, uh, this defense should be even better. But uh, he just needs to get better at tackling and being able to recognize. But like I told you, Dan, he's made plays in training camp. I mean, he went up and he made plays. He's made play during uh, preseason. Now can you do it there in the regular season? They're going to need you against Tyree Kill and against uh, Jalen Waddle. Waddle so. yeah. They're gonna they're gonna need to be on their uh, on their toes for that one, and they're gonna need JT to play well. Yeah, and again, we uh, this sort of reminds me of Edge, right? I just think it's very thin behind Derwin uh, Lohi, You know, he's had some good games, he's had some highs and lows, and everything else. But I just don't know about him. You know, JT Woods. I don't think we saw much of last year. Was he out? He might have been out. JT Woods barely even played last year. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we're going to see what he has. But again, the biggest question marks is the same for the edge and the safety. Who do you have behind your main guy? And who can you put in there that you feel confident enough to hold it down while either this guy's resting or, in Derwin's case, playing in the box and doing other things? Because what good is it if you send Derwin James on a blitz, if they just beat you over the top because they caught these guys napping or whatever? So... Again, it's going to be very interesting to see what they try and do. And hopefully they, you know, they call the right things to utilize their skill sets to their full potential. So it'll be interesting. Last but not least, uh, the oh, special team unit. Oh. It's going to be uh, J.K. Scott, Josh Harris, and uh, it's going to be uh, Cameron Dicker ends yeah. up taking the uh, the uh, the kicker position. Dicker is the kicker. Uh, they sent Dustin Hopkins to uh, five times in the mirror. Or no, they took Dustin. Oh, but wait, hold on. Before we She's do that, though, me. before we go to that, <laughs> uh, my bad. I forgot something. No, 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 no. It's nothing. No, no, no. It's nothing like that. Uh, this is what Derek Ansley had to say about uh, about the defense uh, and what he thinks about them uh, this going into this season. Let's go to that now. Shout out, Derek. For, you know, first, you know, coach didn't have to give me the opportunity, so I'm very thankful that he did. Um, obviously, he calls the plays, and we do a good job of assisting him to give him the things he needs to call the game at a high level. Um, but it's, it's hats off to our staff, man. Our staff did a really good job getting prepared for San Fran. You know, Jay and Giff with the front, you know, Jeff and Mike with the middle pieces with the linebackers, and then, you know, T, um, Tommy and um, Will with the secondary. So made made my job easy. You know, we just try to call the game, let the players go out there and play. Uh, there's no perfect calls. There's no special calls. It's all about the guys in between the lines. My bad. I, I, I completely butchered that one. So he was talking, he got to call the plays on uh in San Francisco. They let him call the plays. Usually it's Brandon Saley. So there he was talking about him calling the plays in San Fran. So he just said shout out to all the team for making it easy on him. But uh but uh day Dion Henley got a pick and and they did out. well. So look at that. Uh, interesting. But uh Cameron Dicker ends up uh winning the kicking job. They sent uh, Dustin Hopkins to the uh, Cleveland Browns for a seventh round draft pick in 2025. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so Dustin Hopkins is now the kicker over there. The Chargers get Cameron Dicker. Honestly, the Chargers should thank Dustin Hopkins. He kind of set everything back into motion, like I was telling Gilbert on uh, Compass on the Beat. Uh, without him. They uh they they went through a revolving door of kickers and they finally brought him in. Yep. And uh and he kind of stabled stabilized everything. They hadn't had a kicker that could make anything since Nick Novak consistently. So that's been a couple of years. Yeah. So uh, now Cameron Dicker came in for him last year and he he did a really good job for this team. So they're hoping that he uh he continues that. But uh but Dan, any uh do you like your kicker? Oh, yeah, he was excellent last year, and I think he was a rookie undrafted or something, but I know he didn't have a lot of experience, so yeah, no. shout out to him. That's And you know what? That's what you want in your daily life, in your job, or, for instance, the NFL. You're going to be given opportunities. What you do with those opportunities is everything. Does that make sense? 
Like, you have got to maximize every single opportunity and not focus on the negatives, not focus on whatever, self-doubt or whatever else. Just have a stone-cold conviction in who you are and maximize your opportunities. You guys can do this. Shout out to you, little wisdom with Dan. Call me Guru Dan from now on for now. No more Dan and Dago. I'm a guru today. Guru. No Shout Stradamus, you're everything, I guess. No uh, but we appreciate no you guys so much. Don't confuse my title. Thank you so much for uh, watching Shout another out. episode of What's Up Bolts with Dan and Dago and I. Uh, obviously, the season is on the horizon. Next Thank week, God. folks, you guys are going to be excited about some of the guests that we have on here to break down the opposing team. I'm excited. Dan's excited. We're all excited. So make sure you guys are on the lookout. I'm going to try and post those. Most likely on Thursdays, uh, so that you guys have through day enough to listen. So Thursdays are gonna be uh the day that we post uh our preview episode. So make sure you guys are on the lookout for that. Uh and like if I you said, don't mind me jumping in real quick, one thing for sure, as especially as the season gets started, first off, don't forget like, comment, subscribe, be a compa telecompa. If you have any questions about the opponents they're facing and everything else you'd like to ask the guests we have on or whatever. Rate the comments. You know your boy Dan and Dago's uh, checking him out. By the way, shout out to uh, the person who commented Little Giants is a classic. You're damn right it is. I forgot about that one. That one, that one's a good one with uh, Jay from uh, Modern Family and all that stuff. Hilarious. So yeah, don't forget but, to get in there in the comments. Yeah, make sure you guys uh, get those because Dan and Dago's really good at that. So we'll be uh, answering any questions you guys have. But like I like I just said, we will be having guests on every single week. We will try and have guests on every single week. But most likely last year we were able to. This year, that's the plan. Uh, one uh, beat writer, reporter from the opposing team so that we can get you guys the best analysis that you guys are going to get. And obviously so you guys can uh, can see what the Chargers are up against that uh, going into that week. So we appreciate you guys so much for checking out another episode of What's Up Bolts. Please, like Dan said, comment, li like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ding so you get the notification when we post an episode. But we appreciate you guys again. Don't forget, be a compa, tell a compa about what the compas are doing. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you week one leading up to the Miami Dolphins versus Let's Chargers. Go, Finally, no more baseball. It's back to football, baby. Let's go.